Welcome back to Drawbridge Props and Armory. My name is Levi Woods and I'm a prop builder. Today I've got a little bit of time in my shop and I can't wait. Uh, the Suicide Squad movie comes out this weekend and I got super inspired. I was watching the trailer and I thought, wow, it would be super cool to build something from this show. So I decided that I would just do a small little project. One of the characters, Harley Quinn, played by Margot Robbie, she is wearing this cute little choker that says Puddin, which I guess is what she calls the Joker in the film. It's like a little pet name. And I thought, what a cool build. It's just a pretty simple little afternoon job. It's got a leather band with a buckle, and it's got these brass letters that are cut out that say Puddin. I grabbed a couple of potential brass buckles, and as with all of my builds, I like to start with a paper pattern. In this case, it's really important because I need to make the brass letters snug so they don't slide around on the completed choker. It's immediately apparent that the small buckle is way too small. I printed out some scale letters to help speed up the process. You can see that each character is slightly taller than the belt is wide. This will allow space for the leather to pass through once the letter is complete. From a piece of gold leather, I cut a strip twice as wide as I want the finished belt to be. I use two rulers when cutting light leathers so that I know I am maintaining a consistent width on my strip. Once this is folded and glued back on itself, it will leave a nice finish on both sides. I'm using a water-based contact cement for leather. I've tested it under harsh set environments and once it's cured, it does not fail. It's important to let this set up, so let's get over to cutting some metal. The brass I'm using today is 050 of an inch thick. Firing up the bandsaw makes quick work of this brass sheet. And because the brass moves heat very quickly, it doesn't require a lot of oil to keep the blade cool. Enough time has passed that the contact cement is dry and tacky. I'll just fold it over to the center line that I drew earlier. Hammering it with a lightweight, non-marring hammer helps compress the contact cement and ensures a tight bond. A firm press with a hard brayer or rolling pin will give you the same result. Now I use my punch to pierce a couple of quick holes so that I can cut out the center of these characters with my jewelry saw. Look at that, I can see it coming together already. I use a stick of beeswax to apply a little bit of lubricant to the saw blade. I like to use 81 tooth per inch blades when cutting out the inside of a small piece. It leaves a smoother edge and requires less filing and sanding. Jumping over to the belt sander and making sure the belt is absolutely square to the table, I give each character a sand to get it closer to the final shape. I say closer because we'll need to be able to remove a bit more later to correct any imperfections after soldering. Cutting a couple of small strips of brass out of a scrap piece of 070, these little pieces are the same width as the leather is thick. I'm using a paste solder for brass that was recently recommended to me at my jewelry supplier. This was actually the first time I used it, and I filmed it. Always a scary thought. It was good to use overall and created a bond similar to a medium hard silver solder. It doesn't require any flux, so that was an added bonus. I give the soldered letters a quick dip in water to cool down just in case they're warm enough to burn me. Then I trim any excess with a diagonal cutter. and throw them into a pickle bath to remove any fire scale and show any imperfections in my soldering. Now I can give the letters their final shape with the belt sander. These brass letters get extremely hot when I'm sanding them, so I keep a little container of water close by so that I can just give them constant dips. I would probably have set up the power file in the vise to do the work on the letter P, but since I already had my files out to do the inside cutouts, 
I just thought I'd use the files to do the outside. Because I'm lazy, I used 320 grit only on my little orbital sander. The brass and the solder are relatively soft, and the 320 was able to clean up both the major scratches fast enough and left the small enough tooth that it was easy to polish off. I used jewelry rouge on my polisher, and it makes quick work of this brass. I'll give the letters a quick wipe with wax and grease remover so they're ready for their final installation. Let's finish up this leather piece. First I'll use a slot punch to get the buckle in place. Next I'll mark out a couple of holes and install some brass eyelets. A one and a half inch English point strap end punch leaves a beautiful finish on the tip of this belting. Now I'll run a quick stitch of black thread around the edge to give it a bit of detail, just like the one in the movie. And now we're ready to install the letters. Finally, two rivets will hold the buckle in place, and that's the final step in today's build. I hope you've been enjoying watching my videos as much as I love making them. Please leave your comments, click the like button below, and feel free to share with your friends on social media. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.